Welcome to The Scoop on Mason County Press. I'm Alan Neuschwander. The Scoop today brought to you by West Shore Bank and Benton Baker Ford. Here at Scottville's Riverside Park, joined by the new Scottville City Manager, Jimmy Newkirk. Jimmy, thanks for joining us today. Absolutely. Well, you're uh, a few weeks into the j job here, started in the beginning of May. Um, how exciting is it for you to be back home? You are a local guy, graduated from Mason County Central and raised here, got strong family roots. So it's got to be exciting for you to be back it, home in Scottville in this capacity. It is. It's very exciting. Um, you know, after growing up here and seeing, you know, everything that Scottville, you know, has a real long, uh, rich history. And just to be in this position and, you know, being able to have some influence over the direction of Scottville for the future is is really exciting. Right. Yeah, it's really cool to see homegrown talent coming back and running our communities. Now you look, you know, next door in Ludington too with Mitch Foster, a local guy too, is the city manager in Ludington. So it's, I mean, that really is kind of exciting to see again, homegrown talent coming back to, to better our communities. Oh yeah. It's, you know, I've, I've spoken to Mitch a few times and, you know, and emailing things and it's kind of a, a unique thing to have happen, you know, as uh, the two larger cities in the, in the county and both Scottville boys. Sure. Um, and so we'll see what we can do. You know, he's doing a great job over in Ludington, and uh, I hope I can follow up in uh, a little bit smaller scale, but do the similar things in Scottville. Absolutely. And for those who don't know you, why don't you just give us a little bit about your background? Who is Jimmy Newkirk? Uh, well, I, you know, I was grew up here until I lived here uh, just outside of town, other side of Brookside Cemetery there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, went to school at Grand Valley, degree in uh, political science, and then uh, did a couple years at uh, Central in Saginaw Valley, got my teaching certification, uh, taught for a couple years, got laid off, taught another year, got laid off, and decided that, you know, I'm not dumb. You know, things weren't looking good in education at that at that point. So had an opportunity to go work for the DNR at the state park here in Ludington, and I uh, got a ranger job there and uh, kept looking to promote and get more time because I was working seasonally. Yep. So stops at Silver Lake, Tacoma Falls, uh, the Porcupine Mountains, Harrisville, and then this opportunity you know, came up and, you know, something just said, hey, you got to go for this. Yep. And so all, all here I am. Out. Yep. Fantastic. Good. So you've been on the job since May 5th. I mean, how, how's the first few weeks gone for you? Uh, it's been really busy, but really, really good. Um, you know, coming home, a lot of the familiar faces and names um, all reached out and I've been out in the community and make sure I'd stop in as many businesses as I could in the first couple weeks and just to, you know, introduce myself or reintroduce myself and, um, you know, just, you know, make those contacts again and let people know, hey, you know, it's an open door. Uh, give me a call. Give me a text. You know, stop by, um, you know, and because obviously I'm not going to come in and, you know, do anything to Skyville by myself. You know, sure. it's going to take uh, the team effort. The clerk and treasurer are, are really excited. We have a you know real good environment in the office now. And, you know, going forward, it's going to take, a, you know, the community behind us to, Mm -hmm. to keep pushing Scavel forward, you know, fill the empty storefronts that haven't already got plans and, um, you know, bring some activities and things back to town. Mm -hmm. And you talk about filling those storefronts, revitalizing downtown Scottville and kind of having people revisit Scottville. What, what's your plan for that? What does that look like? Well, I think it's already happening. And I don't think I, it's not my plan. Um, it's just kind of what I'm, you know, fortunate enough to kind of walk into. Um, you know, several of the, the fronts already had plans. Uh, buildings have been purchased, uh, new ideas. I think there's a, a couple new uh, eating places that are, you know, planning on coming in, hopefully, you know, by the end of summer or midsummer. And, you know, that's going to pull other people. You know, it's it's not anything specific I'm going to do. It's, you know, the support that the city can give. Um, you know, and, and that's reaching out with utilities, you know, and helping people, you know, figure out, you know, what's going to be best for their business model. And when, once you start the ball rolling a little bit, you know, that inertia is going to take over. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of coming in midway, I think. And things are already rolling. I'm not, or it won't take credit for any of it. Yep. Um, but I've said a few times, it's like once that momentum gets moving, you got to ride with it. And so as much as we can get done and as many people we can get into town, um, there's going to be some great opportunities in the near future. Yep, absolutely. And you know, you've talked in the past too about streamlining processes, just making it easier for the citizens of Scottville to interact with City right. Hall. Talk there's, about that a little there's, bit. There's, you know, there's several different permits and things that you need to do um, as a resident of Scottville. You know, whether it's, um, you know, the commission just passed a, a resolution, you know, to uh, have backyard chickens. Well, prior to last week, you had to go before the city commission and say, sure. I'd like to have some chickens in my yard. That's not what the city commission's there for. You know, they don't they don't need to hear why you want to do it or anything. It's like that should be something that can come right from my office. You know, mm -hmm. you know, you come in, say this is what I want to do. If you meet the parameters, you meet the guidelines, 
you know, it's a done deal. Pay the permit and have your chickens. Um, and there's a lot of different things like that. And it's, let's not tie up the commission time. Let's bring, you know, that government. So you, when somebody comes in to the office, they're talking to the person or people that are going to do the work for them and have the answers to their questions. Right. Sure. And, um, you know, we're here at Riverside Park, kind of the gem of Scottville. What are your plans for the future of Riverside Park? Um, well, it's, I've got big plans, uh, but a very small pocketbook <laughs> for the park right now. Yep. Um, you know, we'd like to make, you know, several improvements. It's, uh, it's time as the, some of the seasonal residents, um, or seasonal campers here at the park have brought up. The electrical system is dated. Mm -hmm. Uh, the water system's dated. Um, you know, we offer cable TV down here, but that's getting more and more expensive. And so, you know, not many campgrounds offer cable anymore, you know, so mm -hmm. We're looking at you know some Wi-Fi capabilities maybe for the whole park, but those are difficult things to do all, you know, in little bits and pieces. If you're going to you know dig a trench and lay new water line or electric, you kind of need. It's best to do everything all, all at once. Then you're you're limited your amount of uh, labor, you're limited the amount of ground time you have you know places torn up, um, but you, we have to do something. You know, it's we can't let the the park get any farther back in in maintenance and repairs. Um, and that also includes, you know, we're shoring up the, the shoreline here on the, on the curve. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bruce Krieger's been working real hard the last, you know, year or two to, to pull in some grant money. And we're finishing up that, that part of that process right now. And uh, hopefully still continuing working with him. He's uh, still down here quite a bit and uses the river and is real passionate about the, the place. And so uh, we want get to this, get this project wrapped up so we can stabilize the bank and then work our way inland and, and see what we can't do. And, and whether that's grants or mm -hmm. some other sort of funding, um, really making some improvements and really capitalize on the kind of the unpolished gem we have down here. Right. Yeah. And you're talking about downtown Scottville again, going on back to that. And you talked about some new restaurants coming in and some other businesses in the storefronts. But, you know, one thing that always used to bring a lot of people to Scottville was things like the Harvest Festival. And for a few right. years, I think we did the music festival and things like that. And with COVID, obviously, there's been a lot of restrictions the last, you know, year and a half about what you can do as far as, you know, public gatherings like that. But any plans to bring any of those types of gatherings or celebrations back? We're going to do something. And I know prior to me taking this job, you know, I've, I've I know there's a long history with the Harvest Festival and and it was a big you know one time a year celebration yeah. and it's not necessarily just us that it's going to have difficulty bringing something that big back into town you know the carnival companies uh, there was one on the other side of the state uh, with COVID they couldn't keep it going I mean that was their livelihood and so they've shut down and so it's it's not just our side of the coin that is going to limit some sort of big festival like that mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean we can't do something um, you know, we're still going to have a car show. We're doing the farmer's market. And all, while those are smaller things, that's a start. And so if we just keep building on these smaller things, then we're going to be able to do something bigger. We're, you know, the DDA is working um, to do a, a really nice event with the 10 and 31 festival uh, during the first week of August. And while it may not be the harvest festival we saw, you know, for decades, um, you know, we're, we're shutting down, you know, north and, stout, north and south Main Street, but we're going to do something. You know, sure. there's, there's way too many people here not to do something. There's, you know, hardly uh, any vacant houses right now. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, we got to give people something to do. That's, that's what the city's here for. That's what, you know, brought people here. And um, while we, we may not have that big one time a year event, we're going to spread it out and maybe have more people, you know, in contact over the course of the summer and, uh, you know, and create a, a maybe a year or summer long uh, scenario where there's always something going on in town yep. and it doesn't matter when you come in just pass through Scottville there's always something to do yeah any other short-term long-term plans that you're focused on that you want to talk about uh, right now we're just trying to get some some processes streamlined and uh, you know catch up on some projects that may not have gotten completed or were stopped um, you know for various reasons and uh, trying to make things a little bit more efficient too um, you know I've just you know, working in state government for a number of years. It's like I'm used to, you know, some red tape and some bureaucracy to do some rather simple things. And, you know, we're not constrained with that. And so sure. um, as I kind of find more and more uh, things that are going on, you know, whether it's the DPW, you know, I'd, they can, you know, definitely need some help um, and trying to find some more efficiencies. And why are we doing this? And why are we doing that? And, you know, if the answer is, well, just because we always have, 
well, let's take a look at it and see if that's the best way to do it, you know. Um, and just, you know, small things like that to get started. And, um, and then, you know, in short order, we'll start tackling some of the bigger things. Sure. You talked uh, early on about the accessibility of government and how you have an open door policy. Um, if people do want to get a hold of you, what's the, what's the best route to get a hold of you? Office hours, phone number, website, Just, anything I'm, like that? I'm in the office most days, and then if I'm not in the office, I'm probably downtown someplace. Um, but I've had like two or three people just walk into this morning, you mm -hmm. know, and they wanted, you know, whether it's, you know, refuse bags or, you know, to pay a water bill or something. And it's like, hey, you know, you know, there's the new city manager here, you know, we just want to stop and meet him. Or I knew him, you know, 30 years ago when he was a kid or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just, you know, however, phone call, email, uh, you know, the email is the same, city manager at cityofscottville.org. Uh, just stop in. Um, Pretty much any any current method of communication I'm available for. Sure. Great. Well, welcome back to Scottville, Jimmy. Thank you. We're happy to have you here, and good luck in your new role as city manager. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Well, that's it for Mason County Press, The Scoop. I'm Alan Neuschwander. As always, The Scoop has been brought to you by West Shore Bank and Benton Baker Ford.